empowered to be my witness from Jerusalem to the end of the world. Kwa sababu mandiko anasema Roho wa Yesu akawaambia wanafunzi utapokea nguvu akisha wajilia Roho Mtakatifu nanyi mtakuwa mashahidi toka Samaria hadi Yerusalemu. Now many people think that evangelism is just telling people about Jesus. Na watu wengi wanafikiri tu uinjilisi ni kuambia watu habari njema tu za Yesu. In the Bible it's not just telling. Na Biblia inatuambia kabisa. It also pray for people to experience the power of God, to experience the miracles of God. Uh, ku, the miracles are not the purpose. Ni kitu cha pia. But the bringing them to Jesus is a purpose. Watu tena kwa yesu ni na and God has shown me a way of doing evangelism I call experience God evangelism. Mungu alinipa kitu ambacho kinaitwa uinjilisi wa kuleta watu kwa Yesu. Pigia Yesu makofi. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And people can experience God. Watu wanaweza kumzoea Mungu na jua. Have you experienced the Holy Spirit? Umewahi kumzoea au umewahi kuwa na Roho Mtakatifu akakaa ndani yako? The point is we need to build up the relationship so that every time we pray we can experience his presence. Siku zote tunapaswa kumuomba Mungu akae ndani yetu na akae ndani yetu ili kila tunapoomba tuombe katika roho. And then when you pray for people they can experience the presence of God. Na wakati mwingine ukiombea watu waendelee kuishi katika uwepo wa Mungu. Now this is something we need to take more time praying and practicing. Hiki ni kitu kingine pia tunahitaji ili tuendelee kuombea na kuwafundisha watu kuomba. Now first I'm going to give you Bible verses about how we can experience the Holy Spirit. Cha kwanza ambacho tunaenda unaweza kaandika sasa ni namna gani unaweza kuwa na roho mtakatifu ndani yako. So when people when you pray for people they accept the experience peace and then you can tell them the Bible verse. Na ili uweze kuwa unawaombea watu wako wakiwaongoza kuwa na roho mtakatifu kama Biblia inavyosema. Then we can say that this is what the Bible said that we can how we can experience God. Hili ndivyo Biblia inavyoweza kusema namna tunavyoweza kumkuwa na Mungu siku zote kuendelea kuwa na Mungu. So you just experience the Holy Spirit. Unaweza ukabadilisha uzoefu wa Roho Mtakatifu. And would you like God to bless your whole life? Na Roho au Mungu akaendelea kukubariki maisha yako yote. And if the person is willing then we can lead them to pray to accept Jesus as their savior. Na unaweza kufundisha watu sasa wakaendelea kupokea Roho Mtakatifu na wakamjua kama Yesu ni Bwana na Mwokozi wa maisha yao. So we should be familiar with this Bible verses. Kwa lazima hiyo vitu pia uvizoelee na kuvijua kila wakati. The first one is John 14:27. Kitabu cha Yohana 14:27. Kitabu cha Yohana 14:27. Peace I live with you, my peace I give you. Amani ishi na wewe kwa Many people when we pray for them they experience quietness and peace in the heart. Watu wengi wanaomba na kuabudu katika mioyo na katika undani wao wa mioyo yao. Now I usually ask people what they've experienced. Unaweza kuwauliza watu ni kitu gani ambacho umekuwa ukikizoelea? Because if we don't ask they Afterwards they might forget about the experience. Wakati mwingine wanaona upokea vitu lakini wanasahau vitu ambavyo ni vya muhimu kwao pia. So they need to pay attention what they experience. Wanatakiwa kujua pia umuhimu wa jambo hilo pia na wawe nalo maisha mwao. First is this quietness and peace. Kwa mfano neno hili kama hili la amani. And the next Bible verse is Matthew 11:28. Katika kitabu kile cha Mathayo 11:28. Come to me all you who are weary and burdened and I'll give you rest. Njoni kwangu ni nyote msumbukao na wenye kulemewa. Amezigo. Now when we pray for people many people feel burdens go away. Tunaomba watu na mara nyingi watu hawajui wataenda wapi. That the worry and the burdens go away after the prayer. The burdens and worry go away after the prayer. Ha, watu wengi hawajui sasa wataenda wapi baada ya maombi yale ambayo umewaombea kupitia ile andiko la njoni kwangu ni nyote msumbukao na wenye kulemewa na mizigo. So we can tell them this is what Jesus said. Kwa hivyo tunaweza kuambia kitu ndicho ambacho Kristo alisema. 
All you who are weary and burdened can come to me and I'll give you rest. Wale wote waliochokesho kwa kubeba mizigo mizito mje kwangu nami ni wapi pumziko. And Romans 5:5. Warumi sura ya 5 mstari wa 5. The second part. Sehemu ya pili. The love of God has been poured out into our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. Upendo wa Mungu umeachiliwa katika meyo zetu kwa njia ya Roho Mtakatifu ambaye alipeanwa kwetu sisi. Warumi sura ya 5 mstari wa 5. So the Holy Spirit can give us bring us the love of God. Roho Mtakatifu anaweza kuleta ule upendo wa Mungu. And some people will feel greatly touched by the love of God. Watu wengi watasikia kwamba wameguzwa na mkuzo wa kiajabu, mkuzo mkubwa zaidi. And then I say chapter 61 verses 1 to 3. Katika kitabu cha Isaya sura ya 6, sura ya 61 mstari mdogo hadi tatu Isaya the spirit of the sovereign Lord is on me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. Isaiah, still moja. What Isaiah? Isaiah, na mi. Still na moja, still wa kwanza hadita. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives and release from darkness for the prisoners. To proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and a day of vengeance of our God. To comfort all who mourn and provide for those who grieve in Zion. To bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning. Roo wagwana yuju yangu na amenipaka mafuta ili nije ni waubirie watu habari njema, ni waubirie masikini habari njema. Amenituma ili ni kuje ni kawaponye walio bondeka mioyo na kutangaza mwaka wa uhuru wa wale walio fungwa na kuwatoka kuwatoa katika giza la gereza na kutangaza mwaka wa Bwana uliokubalika Now these Bible verses are like the great commission of the Old Testament. Aha, mstari huu ni kule kutumwa kukubwa ambao kumetumetumwa kutokana kwenye agano la kale there is says that the spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. Inasema kwamba roho wa Bwana yu juu yangu manake Bwana amenipaka mafuta. To preach the good news to the poor, kuhubiri ujumbe mpya kwa maskini. So this is like a great commission. The Holy Spirit come upon us to send us to preach the good news. Yaani sasa hapa umekwisha kutuma wakati Roho Mtakatifu ameshakuja kwako, amekuachilia, amekuweka uhuru uende ufanye kazi. But it doesn't stop there. Lakini haisimamishi hapo. And we go out and heal the broken hearted. Inaendelea kusema kwamba tuponye roho zilizobondeka. Are there many people who are sad? Kuna waje, kuna wale watu ambao wamekasirika. Are there many people in the world that are sad and burdened and weary? Yes, it's true. <coughs> so we can pray for people and then they experience being healed. Kwa hivyo tunaweza ombea watu wanahisi kwamba sasa wamepokea uponyaji. And then we can let them know this is God coming to comfort you. Kwa hivyo sasa utawaambia waelewe kwamba huyu ni Mungu ambaye amekuja kukuwafariji. So do you want God to continue bless you? Je, ungelipenda Mungu aendelee kubariki? And then if they are willing, na sasa kama wanakubali, we lead them to pray to Jesus to accept Jesus as savior. Tunawaongoza maombi ya kwamba wakubali Kristo Yesu ndio mwokozi. And then Psalm 16 verses 8 to 9. Katika kitabu kile cha Zaburi sura ya 16 mstari wa 9 hadi 8. Zaburi 16 mstari wa 8 hadi 9. Zaburi 16 mstari wa 8 hadi 9. I have set the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand I will not be shaken. Therefore my heart is glad and my tongue rejoices and my body also will rest secure. Aha. Nimemweka Bwana mbele zangu kwa sababu sasa kwa sababu ameketi mkono wa kuume na pia mimi sitaogopa kwa sababu moyo wangu una furaha na ulimi wangu unafurahia na mwili wangu wote unafurahia kwa sababu uko huru uko salama. Here David said that he always set the Lord in front of him. Hapa Daudi anasema kwamba amemweka Mungu mbele zake. 
That means that he has a close relationship with the Lord. And then because the Lord is at his right hand, so he will not be shaken and affected by the world. And then his heart is glad and his tongue rejoices. So with the presence of God, he has joy. When we believe that God loves us, when we say God is loving me, and spend time praying to God more, we'll have more and more joy, and it can be spread to other people. There has been many times that I pray for people to experience joy. But it seems strange in Africa, not too many people will feel with the holy laughter. I thought that in Africa the people were very free when they dance and sing. But I noticed that maybe they haven't learned to concentrate with the spirit, to love God, to open the spirit to God. I hope some of you will experience the spirit of joy when you experience that you have to keep it you spend more time praying immediately when I pray for you too or the pastors pray for you you keep praying to keep the anointing of the Holy Spirit the day I experience the joy of the Lord I kept praying in a meeting to keep the anointing. And on the way home in the bus, I kept loving the Lord so the joy would stay. And at home, I kept praying. And the next morning, I start praying again. And every day after that, now anytime I think of Jesus his, his joy can flow through me I have prayed for some people they, they were overwhelmed with the great joy so I told them spend more time praying and then you can keep the joy and then Two weeks later, I went back to them and I asked them, how is it now when you pray? And they said, oh, Some of them told me they've lost the joy. I said, how long did you pray every day? They said, a few minutes. I said, you need to pray longer and more devoted before. For you can keep the anointing. Now you know, later when I finished this, uh, finished this uh, about what, how we experience God, then I will talk about how to keep the anointing. Hope you will really hunger for the anointing. Next time I ask you to come forward and lay hand on you. It can help you greatly to keep the anointing. Inaweza basi kusaidia vikubwa ili uweke ule upapo. Okay, and then he said, he said, also my body will rest secure. Anasema mwili wangu umekuwa salama. 
So the body will also feel comfort. Yani hata mwili wako unasikia umefarijika, umetulizwa. Because God has created our body. Kwa sababu Mungu ameumba mili zetu. When we love God, God will also bless our body. Tunapompenda Mungu, Mungu anabariki mili zetu. God will give us health and comfort. Mungu atatupa afya na atufariji. So many people said they feel peaceful and joyful in the heart and comfort to the body. Watu wengi husema kwamba wanasikia furaha, wanasikia mili zao zimetulizwa, wame wako salama kabisa. And then when you pray to you, when you open your heart, you when might feel the whole body is you feel comfort over your whole body. Unapofungua kinywa chako unasikia kwamba mwili wote umetulia sasa. Okay, and then Psalm 4:8. Zaburi sura ya 4 mstari wa 8. Zaburi sura ya 4 mstari wa 8. I will lie down and sleep in peace for you alone O Lord make me dwell in safety. Ya kwamba nitalala chini na nipumzike katika amani kwa sababu wewe ndiye Bwana ambaye ndiye amani yangu. So God can make us sleep better. Na hivyo hata katika kulelewa kwako Mungu anaweza kukusaidia ukalala vizuri. I have prayed I pray for a number of people who have sleeping problem. Ameomea watu wengi ambao wako na matatizo ya kulala. Some of them after I pray for them immediately they feel very sleepy. Yaani huyu mtu hajakuwa na usingizi. Kuna watu ambao hawana usingizi hata wakilala usingizi hauji. Or some people have all sleep for few days and then after prayer suddenly they they sleep better. Ama wengine walipoteza usingizi hata wakienda kulala usingizi hauji anapo waombea wanahisi kulala wakati huo huo. And there was a girl who was going to college and she had lost sleep for almost four years. Na she was born a minute moja aliyekuwa akienda kwenye chuo lakini alikuwa amepoteza usingizi miaka minne iliyopita. Every day she slept very little. Yaani kila siku yeye alikuwa analala muda kidogo sana. And her mother brought her to the meeting. Na sasa mama yake alipomleta katika mkutano. And after I pray for her, alipomaliza kumwombea. She start to be able to sleep. Alianza kulala. In a few days she could sleep regularly. Ya kwamba sasa kwa siku zilizofuata alikuwa analala sana. And then she went back to college and finished her college degree. Sasa alipokurudi chuoni akamaliza masomo yake. So we will see all kinds of miracles when we pray more. Tutaona aina nyingi ya miujiza tunapomfuata Mungu zaidi. And then March 16 verses 17 to 18. Actually you can start with verse 15 to 20. March 16 verse 15 to 20. March 16 verse 15 to 20 Mark 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 And miracles will follow those who believe. Mstari wa 17 wasema kwamba na ishara hizo zitawafuata wale wanaoamini. In my name you cast out demons. Kwa jina langu mtawafukuza mapepo. And in verse 18, mstari wa 18, you lay hand on the sick and they will be healed. Mtawawekelea mikono wagonjwa watapata uponyaji. And in verse 20, mstari wa 20, it says that miracles follow the disciples sema kwamba miujiza iliwafuata wale wanafunzi wake to verify the word of god ili kuthibitisha kazi ya mungu so jesus here promised in a time when the gospel was preached to the whole world yesu amekwisha kutangaza ya kwamba wakati injili inapohubiriwa ulimwengu ni kote everyone who believes can have miracles yule yeyote anayeamini aweza kuwa na miujiza How many of you believe there are miracles? Ni wangapi kati yenu wanaamini kwamba bado kuna miujiza? Can you raise your hand? Okay, very good. Put down your hand please. Second question. Swali la pili. How many of you pray for someone and there was a miracle? Je, ni wangapi kati yenu wamekwisha kumwombea mtu na wakaona miujiza? Okay, now we have less hands, right? Hapo sasa mikono imepunguka. How come not everyone has miracles? Si, sasa imekuwaje ya kwamba watu wengine hawajaona muujiza na wamefanya huduma? One big reason is that we don't spend much time praying. Aha, ni kwa sababu sisi hatujachukua vipindi vyetu vingi katika maombi. And also we are afraid to pray for people. Na pia sisi tunaule uoga wa kuombea watu. 
We think miracles will not happen. Tunafikiria kwamba miujiza haitatendeka. Miracles are the work of God, not our work. Miujiza ni kazi ya Mungu, sio kazi yetu. So I hope you believe that you can have miracles. Natumai kwamba utaamini ya kwamba pia wewe unaweza kufanya miujiza. After experience of Holy Spirit a few months later, yeye baada ya kuhisi nguvu za Roho Mtakatifu miezi michache iliyopita, I went to preach in a church. Alienda kuhubiri kanisani. And I lay hand on the people who want to me to lay hand on. Na kuna watu waliotaka wawekee mikono akawawekea. And afterwards I asked them, baadaye akawauliza, "Did you have you experienced anything?" Je, umehisi chochote? And there was a woman who jumped up and said, "My back ache is healed." Kuna mama mmoja aliruka juu akasema, "Hey, mgongo ulikuwa umenibana, umepona." And then woman jumped up and she said her shoulder ache was healed. Tena mwingine akasema kwamba bedha ilikuwa linaletea matatizo, limepona. And there was a woman who had demons being driven out. Na kulikuwa na mama mmoja aliyekuwa na mapepo kayafukuza. That was the first time that I saw miracles after I prayed. Yaani hiyo ndio ilikuwa kicho kicho kilichokuwa kipindi chake cha kwanza kuona miujiza akiomba. So I realized miracles are real today. Sasa pia yeye anaamini kwamba miujiza iko hadi wa leo. Actually Jesus said, you know, until the time when the gospel has been preached to all to the whole world, Yesu anasema kwamba mpaka ama hadi injili ihubiriwe ulimwenguni kote. Those who believe will have miracles. Wale watakao amini wataona miujiza. Now I have miracle with cancer. Cancer, a miracle with cancer patient. Asha mwomea mtu ambaye alikuwa na ugonjwa ugonjwa wa saratani. There was a woman with pain on the breast and she had cancer. The doctor has diagnosed. Mama mmoja ambaye alikuwa na ugonjwa wa saratani kwenye titi lake daktari alikuwa ashathibitisha kwamba ni saratani. And then she heard my meeting and she came a long way. Alipohisikia kuhusu habari za mkutano wa huyu baba akaja. When I prayed for her I said relax and trust in God. Alipomuombea akamwambia tulie na umwamini Mungu. And don't worry about anything. Kwa hivyo usi usiwe na shaka na jambo lolote. And she was very he was able to put down her worries and was very devoted in the prayer. And then she started to experience joy. She was filled with joy. And then after the prayer she said the pain has left. She had pain for over a month. Kipindi kinachozidi mwezi mmoja. And then when she went back home, she had, she had a body examined. Alipoenda nyumbani, akaenda tena kwa daktari ya mchunguzi. And the doctor said the cancer is left. Na daktari akamwambia ugonjwa wako wa saratani hauko tena, umeisha. You know, when you trust in God, when you have a good relationship with God, you'll see miracles all the time. Unapomwamini Mungu, unapoweka tumaini lako kwa Mungu, utaona miujiza kila wakati. And you can be used by God, na unaweza kutumiwa na Mungu pia. And many people say I don't have the gift to preach or to do many things. Watu wengi husema kwamba mimi sina kile kipawa cha kwenda kubiri ama kuombea watu. But one thing everyone can do when you pray more, lakini kitu ambacho kila mmoja wetu anaweza kufanya unapoomba zaidi is you can pray for the sick or the who are people who are sad and then they are healed. Unaweza kuwaombea wagonjwa ama watu ambao wamefungwa na wakapata uponyaji. Okay? And then Romans 15 verses 18 to 19. Warumi sura ya 15 mstari wa 18 hadi 19. Warumi sura ya 15 mstari wa 18 hadi 19. And Paul said that I will not speak of anything except what Christ has accomplished through me in leading the Gentiles to obey God by what I've said and done by the power of signs and miracles through the power of the Spirit. Paulo akasema sitazungumza jambo lolote kando na kile ambacho Kristo Yesu amekwisha kamilisha kupitia kwangu mimi ni waongoze mataifa kumtii Mungu na na kile ambacho nimekwisha kusema na kufanya kwa kwa nguvu kwa nguvu ishara na miujiza kupitia kwa nguvu za Roho Mtakatifu kwa Yesu Kristo aliye ambaye amenituma kufanya mambo haya so he has brought Gentiles to obey God, to follow God. Paulo pia amewasaidia mataifa kumtii na kumfuata Mungu. By what he said and what he has done. 
kwa kile ambacho amekifanya na kile ambacho amekinena. So it's not just what he said but also by what he does. Sio tu kwa kile ambacho anakinena kinywa chake lakini kile pia anachokitenda yeye mwenyewe. By the power of signs and miracles. Kwa nguvu za miujiza na ishara. Through the power of the spirit. Kupitia kwa nguvu za Roho Mtakatifu. So here Paul says that his evangelism is not just with words but also with the power of the Holy Spirit. Paul anasema kwamba basi uinjilisti wake sio tu wa kinywa lakini uinjilisti wake anaweka hadi kwa matendo. Some people say only Paul can do it. What we need to say, man, if Paul or Peter can do it, only the early church can do it. Now, I'm a little bit too many. We can listen to Paul. We can listen to Paul. Mark 16 verses 15 to 20. Lakini Marko kumi na sita msaru wa kumi na tano hadi ishirini, which we just wrote down. Abatu mekisoma tu mekiandika. There it talks about to the end of the world when the gospel has been preached. Na sela kwa mbahadi muisho wa dunia wakati injili mekuisha kumi. Then we can have miracles. Ya kwa mbata kuwa na miujiza. And then the other passage is First Corinthians chapter two, verses two to five. Kitabu kingi ni wa Korinto wa kwanza sura ya pili mstari wa pili hadi tano. Wa Korinto wa kwanza sura ya pili mstari wa pili hadi tano. There it says in verse two, for I determined not to know anything among you except Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Bahula na sema kwa mbahai ya ni pasa mimi kujua jambo la nchi kwa usuni ni kando na kumujua Yesu Kristo aliye sulubishwa. Now some people say, "Well, Paul only know about Jesus and Him crucified." What we mean is that when Paul is alluding to Jesus Christ, he is alluding to Jesus. And some people say, "Well, Paul doesn't emphasize the Holy Spirit." Now we mean is that when Paul is saying that he has the Holy Spirit, but in verse four. And five, it says that katika mstari wa nne na watana se maivi. My speech and my preaching were not with persuasive words of human wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power. Ya kwamba maongezi yangu haya kuwa tu maneno ya mdomo ya kuwa bembeleza watu lakini yalikuwa maneno yaliyo toka kwenye kipa changu kwa nguvu za roho mtakatifu. So Paul was not just preaching but he also has the power of the Holy Spirit with him. Paulo hakuwa tu anaubiri lakini pia alikuwa na nguvu za roho mtakatifu. When he said that he knew nothing except Jesus Christ and him crucified, it doesn't mean he denied the Holy Spirit. Anapo sema kwamba he hajui lolote kani na kumijua Kristo Yesu aliye sulubisho msalaba, siyo kwamba hajui hata nguvu za roho mtakatifu. He just said that that's the center of the message. Yani anasema hivyo kwa sababu Yesu Kristo ndicho kitu, amba tusema Yesu Kristo katika maubiri yako yosu lazima awe katikati. Jesus and him crucified is our gospel. Yesu na kusulubisho kwake ni lazima kuwe ndio injili yetu. But it doesn't mean we deny the Holy Spirit. Haimaanishi kwamba hapo basi hatutangui Roho Mtakatifu. Because Jesus prepared for the Holy Spirit to come. Kwa sababu Yesu alimwandalia Roho Mtakatifu njia ya kuja. Okay? Now I'm going to talk about how we can have a strong anointing of the Holy Spirit how to keep that strong anointing of the Holy Spirit. Na kuzungumza jinsi ya kuweka ule upako mkubwa wa Roho Mtakatifu. So you can write this down. Haya uandike haya chini ya kwanza. Number 1. Ya kwanza. Repent and turn away from all sins. Tubu na ukaondoke dhambi. Ukageukie dhambi. Uache dhambi. Because God hates all sin. Kwa sababu Mungu anachukia dhambi zote. And sin is repulsive to God. Now we do know that sin has ways to shirik him or to abandon him. And now I will, in one session, I will talk about how to overcome sins. Do you know that people are not just going to do it to shirik him? When we believe that sins are destructive, we know that sin is not going to be abandoned. Sins will give the devil a foothold. Ya kwamba dhambi zitapeana mwanya wa ibilisi kuingia katika maisha yako. And when we say the worst thing can happen to us, unapotenda dhambi kuna mambo mabaya ambayo yatakutendekea. When we hate it like that, unapochukia dhambi sambili. Any sinful thought comes to our mind. Dhambi zozote ambazo zinaweza kuja katika mawazo yako. He didn't say I don't want to commit that sin. Hebu sema kwamba sitaki kufanya hizo dhambi. For instance, worry. Many people think worry is not a sin. Kwa sababu kwa mfano watu wengi huwa wanafikiria kwamba kufadhaika sio dhambi. Worry is lack of trust in God. Yaani kufadhaika inamaanisha kwamba wewe haujamwamini Mungu. Worry is a sin. Hizo ni dhambi. Or negative thinking and feelings. Ama kuwa na mawazo kinyume na hisia kinyume. This is dhambi. This is sin also. Hizo ni dhambi pia. Okay, number two. Ya pili. 
read and believe and apply the Bible. Soma, uamini na utumie Biblia. Soma, uamini na utumie Biblia. Yaani usome Biblia, uamini Biblia na utumie Biblia. Many people think that they experience the Holy Spirit they don't need to read the Bible. Watu wengi husema kuwa mawao kwa sababu wamejana Roho Mtakatifu hawawezi wakasoma Biblia. And many so called the charismatic preachers they don't preach much about the word of God. Na wale wa ubiri ambao wanaubiri kuhusu eh, utajiri na mambo kama hayo wao hawataki watu wasome Biblia. They talk about stories. Wao wanawaadhibia tu adhibi. They read the Bible passage and explain a little bit and then keep on talking about stories. Yeah, let's work on study kamoja ka Biblia, anasoma tu, anakaongea kidogo, anaruka naenda kwenye hadithi zake. And I want to say that being filled with the Holy Spirit doesn't mean we put down the Bible. Ninataka kusema kwamba kujana Roho Mtakatifu haimaanishi Biblia unaiweka kando. You know this that all my teachings are based on the Bible. Uta, utagundua kwamba mafundisho yangu mengi yote ninatoa kwenye Biblia. And it's very important that our faith is firm, firmly found, founded on the word of God. Na ni muhimu ujue kwamba imani yako chimbuko lake ni Biblia. Okay, number three is faith. Ya tatu ni imani. Believe that God loves us very much. Amini kwamba Mungu anatupenda zaidi. And he wants to fill us with the Holy Spirit. Na anataka kutujaza na Roho Mtakatifu. So when we pray don't worry, unapoomba usiwe na shaka. No matter how we pray, we believe God is listening and responding to our prayer. Hayalishi utaomba vipi? Amini kwamba Mungu anasikiliza na ataitikia maombi yako. When you have that faith, it's easier to experience the Holy Spirit. Unapokuwa na hiyo imani ni rahisi sana kuhisi nguvu za Roho Mtakatifu. Number four, ya nne, worship in spirit and in truth for as long as we can. Hebu ukaabudu katika roho na kweli jinsi kadri ya uwezo wako. Yeah, worship and also the Bible also said that to worship the to love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, all your strength. And so the whole person worship God. Now some people worship God just with the mouth. They just shout, Hallelujah, praise the Lord, Hallelujah, praise the Lord. But in the heart they were not loving God or praising God. So we want to concentrate in our spirit, not just the words. Kwa hivyo pia lazima tukashughulikie mwili wetu wa undani, roho, sio tu maneno peke yake. And I want to say that too. Some people dance and I talk so what we mean when I change. They just think of the movement. Yaani wanacheza tu, wanataka tu kucheza ile, yaani kucheza waonekane. It's not the spirit worshiping God. Sio roho ndani mwao inayomwabudu Mungu. When you worship with the whole spirit, unapoabudu Mungu kwa roho yako yote. You can experience the Holy Spirit much easier. Utahisi nguvu za Roho Mtakatifu kwa njia ya upesi sana. Okay, now the so the soul and the spirit we have to distinguish what is what is in our soul and spirit? Lazima utofautishe nini kilichoko katika nafsi yako na nini kilichoko katika roho yako. Because the Bible says worship, uh, worship in spirit and in truth. Kwa sababu maandiko yanasema ukamwabudu katika roho na kweli and you love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul. Na ukampende Mungu kwa moyo wako wote na kwa nafsi yako yote. Okay, the soul includes this. Can you write down? Aya, so haya includes ya kwamba nafsi yako inahusisha mambo haya. Nafsi yako inahusisha mambo haya. The soul includes the mind. Nafsi yako inahusisha mawazo yako. Inahusisha mawazo yako. And then the will, our mind, uh, I mean our decision, our make up our mind. In a position, ya kwaza tumesema ni mawazo ya hako, ya pili tumesema kwamba ni jinsi unangyo fikiria yaani, yaani mapizi yako weo mwenyeo. And also it includes our feelings. Na pia inausisha hisia zetu. Now, the spirit is our relationship with God. The spirit is responsible for relating to God. Lakini sasa roho ni ule usiano wetu na Mungu. So 
the mind, the will, and the feelings is possible for anyone. Anyone in the world understand what is the mind, the will, and the feelings. Mawazo, ishia, na mapenzi yako, kila mmoja na wezo kuyatambua kwa upepesi sana. First the mind, kwa sababu ya kwanza mawazo yako, then agree with everything in the Bible. Mawazo yako lazima ikubalia na kila kitu kilichoko katika maandiku ya kibibilia. We agree that God is very good. Tunakubali kwa mba mungu ni muema zaidi. And to follow God totally is the best. Na kumfuata mungu katika ukamilifu ndo mzuri kabisa. So we worship God in that mind. Kwa hivyo sasa unamuabudu mungu katika hayo mawazo. But some people worship like this. Lakini watu wengine unamuabudu hivi. Oh God is not helping me. Mungu haunisaidi. God loves other people. Mungu anapenda tu na nina nimi hanipei. But he doesn't help me much. Kwa sababu mundo maana ye anasaidika na misi saidiki. There the mind is not totally devoted to God. Yani mawazo yako hayajachiliwa kwa mungu kabisa. So we want our mind to be totally devoted to God. Lezima mawazo yetu yachiliwe kwa mungu kabisa. And then the will. Sasa mapezi yako. Then we want to make up our mind to dedicate our whole life to God. Ya kwamba lezima ujitua we mwili wako wote ukampe mungu. Then I worship God with all my real power. Una mwabudu mungu kwa mungu zako. Then I really want to do it. Ya kwa mwabu kwenu ngelipenda kufanya ibu. For instance, if you really like something and someone, for instance, someone is preparing some good food for you. Kwa mfano kuna chakula mwato unakipenda sana na unasikia mtu na kianda. Then you have not tasted before. Na hindi chakula ni muda huja kila. And you heard that the person is bringing the food. Na unasikia kwa mba hindi chakula kimetengenezo wala unaletewa ni wewe ni unenda kula. Then you really look forward to getting the food. Yani utakuwa unatamani sana masaya kula hile chakula ya fike ule. And Psalm 42 verse 1 talk about as the deer pants for the water, so I pant for the Lord. Jesus, vile maandiko kwa nabo sema katika zaburi arubai na tisa, kama vile ayala anayo tamani, that we hunger for the Lord. Yako kama pia sisi ndipo tulivyo na shauku na mungu. I want the Lord. Yako kama ni namtaka mungu. And then the feelings. Na pia hisia. Do you have feelings toward your friends, family members? Una hisia kwa jirani yako na hata kwa marafiki zako. There's you you probably have at least one friend that you like, right? Kuna wazekana ya kwamba kila mtu ana yule rafiki yake ambaye anampenda sana. Or maybe you like your child. Kwa mfano pia anaweza kuwa ni mwanao. When you see a child, you are very happy. Yani unapo mwona kale ka mwona, unafuraishwa sana. So when we think of God, unapo wanda kuhusu mungu, think of all the good things about God. Hebu ukaanze kuwanda vitu viema vyote mwona kwa tokana na mungu. How he prepared, created water and food for us. Jinsi ya livyo tekneza vya kula vizuri, vitamu na maji ya kuyo kwetu sisi. And you like the taste of water. Alamu unapenda ile alanda ya maji. So we like God who created water. Pia ukampenda ile mungu alie umba maji. We like God who created our body. Tunampenda mungu alie umba milizetu. And we like God who moves in our Holy Spirit. In our spirit. Tunampenda mungu anaye fanya kazi na limuetu kupitia kwa njia roo mtakatina. And we like God who give us peace and joy and love. Tunampenda mungu anaye tupa amani upendo na furaha. All day long I think about the good things of God. Kwa hivyo siku yote unawaza vitu viema vya mungu tu. I see your hunger for God, I like that because that came from God. Ninaona kwama kwa kweli njini muna njaa ya mungu. Kwa hivyo hiyo inanifanya kusema kwama kweli mungu amewanda viema. So I get to like God very much. Kwa hivyo hebu muka mpende mungu zaidi. When you like God very much, unapo mpenda mungu zaidi, it's easy for you to experience how much you see wewe kuhisi mungu za roho mtakatifu. Now some people say this is hard. Watu mwengine musema kwa mwambu haya ni magumu. Think of the food that you like most. Hebu uwaza kuhusu kile chakula nocho kipenda zaini. Or the child you like most. Ama mtoto nune mpenda zaini. And you see the child dancing and laughing. Yule mtoto nune mpenda zaini unapo muona akicheza. In your heart you'll be very happy. Hata katika mwe wako unaisu ukona furaha. So when we pray, we say, God, you're so wonderful. Kwa hiyo napo omo unasema, mungu wewe ni wa ajabu. I like you, Lord. Nina kupenda wana. You're so good. Wewe ni mzuri. You're better than anyone in the world. Wewe unashita kila kisi duniani. 
Now when we can do that, it's easy to experience the Holy Spirit. So first the mind, the will, and the feelings. And then our whole spirit. In Psalm 103 verse 1. Zaburi mia moja na tatu mstari wa kwanza Zaburi mia moja na tatu mstari wa kwanza All that is in me praise his holy name Zile viyote vili vyoko ndani mwambu vika mtukuze na kumsifu mungu So the whole person worship him Ya mwamba wewe kama wewe mzima mzima unamuagudu mungu You can look at me now Haya anasema mwangali Mwangali huku macho When you love God Mwangali huku Mwangali huku Mwangali huku Mwangali huku Mwangali huku Mwangali huku Say my amen. Amen. Hi, I'm going to go kill him. When you love God and worship God, think of the whole spirit. Go up to God. Aha. Hey, bu. Ukatuwe sisi ni roho yako yote na ina kwa mungu. And encourage people to cry out to God like this. Na uimize watu kumulia mungu jina na kusema. Ah, the Lord. Hey, to say my name, I'm twenty. Ah. The laughing for me, I did not laugh. It's a Holy Spirit's joy. Yes, you have a picture, a picture of you. I'm just saying, cry out to God, and one day you could experience the joy. And I say, my friend, my way, we will come and live with Mungu, and we come and pray. The Sikumoya, but you can also think of the goodness of God and be happy. But you can also think of the goodness of God and be happy. But you can also think of the goodness of God and be happy. And then when you're praying, you're very happy. Then you can experience the joy easier too. So cry out like this. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus Lord. Yes, A center of you feel power pushing your body. Ya kwamba kama unajiachia kwa mungu siyo kwamba amelewa, lakini sasa ni roho mtakatifu ya kwamba... So wake up my knees. I spend more time loving God from the spirit. Ya hali unachukua muna wako mwingi kumpenda mungu wako kutuwa kwenye roho ya. Especially when we pray for you. Asua sana chumapo kumbea. Don't talk after we pray for you. Ukisha maliza kuombewa, usianze kuongea. Keep loving God. Endelea kumpenda mungu. Alleluia. The whole spirit ascend to God. Ya kwamba roho yako yote inaenda kwa mungu. Do you learn this secret? Ulisha kuwa umenyifundisha mamba haya. Wewe kamera mantosa kwa haya. You will experience the whole spirit every time you pray. Ya kwamba ukijifundisha mamba haya kila wakati utanisi nguvu za romu takatifu na poomba. And spend more time praying like this. Hebu katukwe vikipili chako kingi kama ombe kama haya. Now this is a kind of prayer for relationship. Yani haya maombe ni yale maombe ya usiano. We intercede for people to na waombe ya watu. But this is not intercession. Lakini siyo kipindi cha maombezi ya kuombea wiki. This is building up the relationship. Hapa na kujenga usiana. And to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Na kujazo na roho mtakatifu. Okay, that's number four. And then number five. Aha, ya tano. Nikuwa na kuyo mimaliza kumbe. Ya tano sasa. Obey God and follow the Great Commission. Mti mungu na ukafuate. What's the Great Commission? Pastor, Great Commission, I said, let me explain. Great Commission. To mti mungu na tufate ule mwito wake mku jitha lingyo tutuma. The Holy Spirit is not just for enjoyment. Roho mtakatifu siyo tuwa burudani tu. The Holy Spirit is for evangelism and helping people spiritually. Roho mtakatifu ni mwakwa kwa kazi ya uinjilisti na kusaidia watu. So if you have a heart to help people to believe in Jesus and to love God more, kama unamoe wa kusaidia watu na kumuamini mungu zaidi, then the Holy Spirit will stay in you. Roho mtakatifu, akaishi na ni mwako. And number six, na ya sita, 
take care of problems in our life. Hebu ukajali matatizo ambayo unayo katika maisha yako. Uyashughulikie. Worry and sins and negative thinking and feelings. Kuwa na na shauku na kuwa na kubebesha mizigo mizito na pia kuwa na hisia kinyume. If a person think about the bad things all the time, kama mtu anawaza tu mambo mabaya kila wakati, he will not be filled with the Holy Spirit. Yeye hatajazwa na Roho Mtakatifu. And number 7. Na ya saba, the laying on of hands helps. Kuwawekea watu mikono kunasaidia. When a spirit filled person lay hand on you it helps. Mtu aliyejaza Roho Mtakatifu anapokuwekea mikono inazaidia. But you have to keep it yourself. Lakini lazima ujiweke we mwenyewe. And also spirit filled prayer meetings helps. Na hata mikutano za kiroho zinasaidia. Spirit filled prayer meeting is not just shouting. Zile mikutano za kiroho sio tu kupiga kelele. But you really love God from your heart. Lakini unampenda Mungu kutoka kwenye moyo wako. Now sometimes I think too much singing, too much dancing could affect the spirit being concentrated to love the Lord. Anasema kwamba kucheza kwingi na kuimba kwingi kunaweza kwa adhibu mpango wa Mungu wa Roho Mtakatifu. Now singing and dancing can help people to open up the spirit. Ndio kuimba na kucheza kunaweza kusaidia watu kufungua mioyo zao kwa Mungu. But after while we should have worship song that are more soft. Lakini tukishamaliza kuimba hivyo tu na nyimbo za kuabudu kwa upolepole kunyekevu. So don't just sing excited exciting songs. Kwa hiyo eti usiimbe tu nyimbo za kufurahisha sisi tumezoea hiyo lazima tuimbe kama tunapenda. Sing soft songs from the heart. Iimba nyimbo zile za polepole kutoka kwenye moyo wako. Hallelujah. How to do evangelism with laying on, laying your hands on them. Anataka sasa watu wa wili wate, afanye mfano wa jinsi ya kufanya kuinjilisti wa kuwekea watu mikono, watu wa wili wate. Two persons of hunger for the Holy Spirit. Watu wa wili ya mawa wanga lipenda kujina roo mtakatifu. Njooni sasa. Someone hold my mic. Jairo. Facebook. Don't you get it? Mwangali ye. When I ask you to come forward, always come like this. Now first we do is we talk with them. But now we don't have time to talk with them. I would say first listen to them and talk with them. And find out how they are. And then responding to their feelings. When we know that these people have, you know, the one we try to evangelize have some problem. And we listen to them. And respond to them. Now you can write this down. So you listen to people's needs and respond to them. So you can write this down the process of doing it evangelism. And then we can share how we or someone else have this similar problem. Na pia akisha kuambia matatizo yake pia nao ukamwambie kuna mtu aliyekuwa na matatizo matatizo kama haya na tulikusaidia yakaisha and how we have been helped by the holy spirit na uwaeleze jinsi vile kulivyosaidika na roho mtakatifu so we say to them do you like god also to bless you alafu na wauliza je mngalipenda mungu pia awabariki and then if they say yes they will say Close your eyes and open your heart to God. Wali kubali kwamba unaweza kufanya na uinjilisi wa mia haya hebu. And relax your macho yenu. And relax your body. Hebu mkazi achirie mili zenu. And I will lay hand on you. And it will take me. Is that okay? Je, hiyo ina kubalika? And then it said, if he says it's okay, na wakusema ni sawa. Then we lay hand on them. Na wawekea mi kwa mwaka. And afterwards I'll ask them. Na nikisha maliza tawauliza. What they have experienced. Wamehisi nini. 
Okay, but now we don't have time for the conversation. We just stay on them. So please. Kwa hivyo sasa hawana hatuna muda wa kutosha kuzungumza nao kwa hivyo kwa hivyo namwambia that is important that we ourselves love God and these people are open to God also. Na ni muhimu sana sisi wenyewe ambao tunataka kuomba tupende Mungu ina watu hawa watu pia wakampende Mungu. Okay, so please relax. Aya kwa hivyo close your eyes. Jiachilie na ufumbe macho. Hallelujah. And then when we pray for them, don't use many, many words. Just pray in a gentle way. Thank you, Jesus. Asante Yesu. You love us very much. Now you can close your eyes too. You can experience the Holy Spirit too. Please stand up and close your eyes. Usimame wote. Unaposimama hivyo ufumbe macho ya. We need you, God. You are God who cares about us. Wewe ni Mungu unayetujali. Thank you Jesus. Asante Yesu. We welcome you Jesus. Tunakukaribisha Yesu. And you love us very much. Unatupenda zaidi. Thank you Jesus. Asante Yesu. And then we can also sing simple songs too. Na pia unaweza kuimba hizo nyimbo tu za raisi raisi pia. Yes Jesus. Loves me, yes, Jesus loves me. Oh, yes, Jesus loves me. Exactly how 
exactly, exactly how you felt in your heart and over your body. Nani ya moyo wako umesikia nini? Nani kwenye mwili wako umesikia nini? Nimejisikia furaha. You felt the joy of the Lord. Okay? Well, that's very good. That's what the Bible says the oil of gladness instead of mourning. Na hiyo ni mzuri kwa sababu hivyo ndivyo maana hiyo nasema kwamba utakuwa na moyo wa furaha isipokuwa moyo wa kilio. So God has given you that joy. Mungu amekupa hiyo furaha. You might have the joy for your whole lifetime. Je, ungelipenda kuwa na hiyo furaha kwenye maisha yako yote? Yes, very good. If you let Jesus to be your savior, he will bless your whole life. Ukiachilia Yesu Kristo kuwa mwokozi wako, atakuwa maisha yako yote. You can have more joy in the whole life. Utakuwa na furaha nyingi maisha ni mwako mwote. How about you? Have you experienced everything in your heart and over your body during the prayer? Umesikia vipi kakaji? Umesikia vizuri sana kitu ikishuka kwa zambu nyeupusu kwa kakamigeuni. Hafu kasikia 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 nyeupusu kwa kakamigeuni. He felt, he felt the power coming upon him like electricity from the, from the head up to the feet. And he felt that now every joint of his body which was heavy became light. So what, it, what you experience the power is what Jesus said, the power will come upon you when you experience, when, when the Holy Spirit come upon you, you experience power. And then with the love is what the Bible says the Holy Spirit will pour the love of God into our hearts. Na sasa kama ni katika upendo ni kile ambacho Roho Mtakatifu anasema kwamba Roho Mtakatifu ataachilia upendo wa Mungu kuvunjike ndani ya mioyo zetu. So God has been so real to bless you. Kwa hivyo Mungu ni wa kweli kutubariki. Do you want God to continue to bless your whole life? Ungelipenda Mungu aendelee kubariki maisha yako yote? So if you are willing that you can pray with me to confess our sins and ask Jesus to forgive us. Basi kama unakubali hebu uombe maombi haya na mimi ili tuombe Mungu atusamehe. Because all have sinned and we sin has separated us from God. Na kesi sote tumetenda dhambi na tume na na dhambi zimetutenganisha na upendo wa Mungu. And when we confess our sin and trust in Jesus as our savior, tunapotupa dhambi zetu na kukiri kwamba Yesu ndo mwokozi wetu because he has died for our sins kwa sababu amekufa kwa ajili ya dhambi zetu he will give you eternal life atakupa uzima wa milele can you pray after me hebu mnaweza omba maombi haya nyuma you all you all will pray after me too na pia nyinyi wote mlioko nyuma mtapie maombi haya nyuma you have heavenly father baba wetu wa mbinguni thank you for what in the what of Thank you for letting us let's experience you during the prayer. Asante kwa kutukubalia sisi tukakuhisi katika maombi. That you have given us peace and joy. Ya kwamba umetupa furaha na amani. And the power of God and the love of God. Kwa nguvu za Mungu na uwezo wa Mungu. Thank you for blessing us. Asante kwa kutubariki. Asante kwa kutubariki. We want to follow you our whole lifetime. Tunataka tukufate wewe maishani mwetu mwote. We confess we are sinners. Tunakiri kwa masisi ni wenye dhambi. We have sinned against people. We have sinned against people. Tume wakosea hata watu. Tume wakosea hata watu. We have been angry with people. Tume kasirikia watu. Tume kasirikia watu. We have told lies. Tume nena uongo. Tume nena uongo. Please forgive our sins. Baba utusamehe dhambi zetu. Baba utusamehe dhambi zetu. Wash us clean with the blood of Jesus. Tukatuoshe kwa damu ya Kristo Yesu. And give us eternal life. Na utupe usima wa milena. Na utupe usima wa milena. Karibu Yesu nani ya mnyoyo zetu Thank you Jesus Asante Yesu We worship you Father Tunakuwa budu Baba We want to follow you Tunataka tukufuati In Jesus name we pray Kwa Yesu Christo tunaomba Amen Amen In the prayer Confess your sin and ask God to forgive you. Je, katika maombi haya umeomba ya kwamba unataka Mungu akusamehe kabisa kabisa? Yes. If you have confessed your sin and trust in Jesus, Jesus has already come into your heart to be your savior. So congratulations, you are now 
So first step is conversation. Now listen. Kwa hiyo ya kwanza lazima muzungumze na msikilizaji. Umeandika? Tuzungumze. Zungumza? Ongea. Ongea na mimi. Oh, si kuzungumza ni kuongea. Ongea na mtu na muelewane. Haya baba, Kiswahili cha Tanzania sasa. The number 2 ya pili Share we have we or someone else have similar experience. Basi ukaongee na yeye kuhusu mtu aliyekuwa na matatizo sawa sawa na yale ambayo huyo unayeongea naye ako nayo. Yaani una unamwadhibia hadithi ya mtu aliyekuwa na shida zinazofanana na za kwake. And how we have experienced the help from God. Na jinsi tulivyopokea msaada wa Mungu. So share. The second step is share. Kwa hivyo ya pili ni kuongea, muongee. Number 3, ya tatu. Invite to prayer. Hebu ukamwalike kwa maombi. Mwalike so, kwa maombi. Would you like me to pray for you? Unamwambia ungelipenda nikuombee that you can experience the help of God. Ili kwamba ukahisi msaada wa Roho Mtakatifu pia. And then number 4, aya nne. And a prayer will open our spirit to God. Katika maombi achilia moyo wako kwa Mungu. The anointing came not from shouting. Ya kwamba ujue upango haujakuja kutokana na kupiga kelele. Especially in evangelism we should not be shouting. Asua sana mnapofanya uinjilisti tusiwe watu wa kuongea kwa sauti tukipiga kelele. But learn to open the spirit lakini jifundishe kufungua roho hunger for god uwe na njaa ya mungu and we can experience it more unaweza sasa ukampokea zaidi when we have experienced him more the person will also experience him more unapompokea zaidi hata huyo mtu pia yeye atampokea zaidi okay and then number 5 right ya tano after the prayer baada ya maombi we say this tunasema hivi please keep your eyes closed in the layer of fumba macho yako and you experience anything in your heart and over your body during the prayer umesikia nini katika moyo wako na kwenye mwili wako tulipokuwa tukiomba by the way the two of you just now I pray for you you would have experienced the body swaying right kwa mfano wale wawili ambao wametoka kwa ombea kuna uwezekano unaweza kuhisi ni kana kwamba una Yaani ni kama umelewa na kesi kulewa. Two of you, the two of you are praying for just now. They listen to us. Nyenye. Seriously, they were swaying. They feel comfortable body. 
Ninyi mbona hamuniangalie? Wanazungumza kuhusu nyiwa wili ambao umeombewa sasa hizi. Mlipokuwa Mlipokuwa mkiombewa, mlisikia nikana kwamba mna yani mtukaji tunasemaje? Wana yumba yumba. And they felt that. Yes. And see, he was about to fall down. Yeah, right. So people might feel that swaying of the Holy Spirit. What do I have Feel like floating. We need to be able to do this ourselves. Now I want to say when we're laying on people, don't push people. When we push people, people know we push them. It's not falling to the ground that does anything. This experience is peace and love and joy and power and comfort. So when we pray, just touch lightly. Sometimes people, they are moving, they thought I was pushing them. What do we need? Okay, well, what do we need? Come, 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 come. <laughs> and they thought I was pushing them. <laughs> but I, I said, I just, I demonstrate. <laughs> I demonstrate, I just touch, close eyes. Funga wache yako. Yani yeye, anaguza tu. I just touch. Anaguza tu. Kukusa. And very often I put my hand behind him. Na vipindi vingi anaweka mkono wake nyuma unajua Kiswahili si mdomo changu. Mhm. Unaibia. So the job is not pushing. Kwa hivyo unaona kwamba yeye hasukumi. So for myself I open the spirit to God. Kwa hivyo yeye ataachilia moyo wake kwa Mungu kwanza. Haleluya. Hallelujah. Now we don't talk again about my baby. Why not go on the movie? Would you like God to continue to bless you? And then if he's willing, then we'll lead him to pray. 
na kama ako anakubali basi ukamwongoze katika maombi or you can tell him about the gospel first ama unaweza kumwambia injili kwa that jesus is the son of god and is god and he died for us ya kwamba yesu ni mwana wa mungu na ni mungu aliyetufia sisi and when we confess our sins and trust in him as our savior ya kwamba unapotupa dhambi zako na kumwamini yeye kama mwokozi he will forgive our sin and give us the life atakusamea dhambi zako na kukuzimia because jesus has died for you kwa sababu Yesu alikufa kwa ajili yako. So you want Jesus to to forgive your sins. He unalipenda Yesu asamehe dhambi zako and then we can lead them in prayer. Tunaweza kumwongoza kwa maombi. Now generally after I lead the person to prayer, na sasa them to believe in Jesus, nikisha muongoza mtu huyu katika maombi ya muamini Kristo Yesu, I will also say to them, one day you can pray for people to experience God. Pia nitawaambia kwamba nitamwambia huyo mtu siku moja pia wewe utakuwa unaombea watu wanajazwa na roho mtakatifu. Do you want to be used by God? Ungenipenda kutumi kutumiwa na Mungu. And if you love God and follow him, unapompenda Mungu na kumfuata, you receive the power of the Holy Spirit. Utapokea nguvu za Roho Mtakatifu. And he'll come upon you. Na atakuja juu yako. So right when I bring people to Jesus, I already start to encourage them to grow and serve God. Ninapowaleta watu katika Kristo Yesu, nitaanza kuahimiza ya kwamba waanze kufanyia Mungu kazi. Okay? Any question about this method? Swali lolote kuhusu hiyo hizo mbinu anaweza kufundisha is experience God evangelism. Yaani ni ule uinjilisti wa kufanya chini ya nguvu za Roho Mtakatifu. You can do it to your friends, your neighbors, your family members. Unaweza fanya mambo hayo kwa marafiki zako, kwa jamaa yako, watu wote. And then there are newcomers to the church you can do that too. Na kuna wale wapendwa wageni ambao wanakuja kanisani unaweza pia kuwafundisha hivyo. Right, we want to first build up the relationship. Lakini ya kwanza ukajenge uhusiano na Mungu. Okay? Now, if you don't have questions, kama hauna maswali, the first thing we want to do is to everyone learn how to open the spirit to experience the Holy Spirit. Kitu ambacho ningelipenda tufanye ni kwamba kila mmoja sasa inatakana asaidie mwingine kuhisi nguvu za Roho Mtakatifu. So what we do now is we all stand up. Kile tunafanya sasa tukasimame wote and think of Jesus na kuwazi kufikiri kusu Yesu Kristo oh